metal wings to fly won't take you to the stars. Use the metal for a boat and you won't sail too far. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret pink code, pink code, Signs can be tricky, it can overheat your brain. Signs can be hard to chew, each bite can be a pain. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret pink code. It's all wrong. Hey, Michelangelo! Are you ever actually gonna draw anything? Painting. Not drawing, painting. You draw a caricature or a comic strip, stuff like that. But painting comes from your soul. It's art. Well, that's not a problem. You always said you're very artistic. And as for the soul, well, everyone's got one of them, right? So just pull something up out of it. You don't get it. You can't just pluck art out of yourself, like a berry. I have to interpret Saturn in a whole new way. But it's just a planet, a gas giant, rounded by a whole bunch of cosmic garbage that is formed into rings. How can there be any other way to interpret it but that one? Well, I can't say yet. That's why I haven't been able to start my painting. But I'm very certain that inspiration will come within a few weeks. <laughs> Are you serious, Carlin? It's just a ball in space with rings around it. How could that take weeks to draw? To paint. I could sculpt it out of cheese blindfolded by then. I'm not much of an artist, but anybody can paint a planet. <laughs> All right, Mr. Smarty Horns, prove it. Glad to. And my Saturn art, I would bet will turn out better than yours does. I'll take your bet. The winner will be whichever of us creates the best artistic image of Saturn by midnight. Agreed. And whichever of us loses will have to stand in front of the entire crew and crow like a rooster. It's a bet. So, this gives me very little time to get this done. I still feel no inspiration, but I'm a pro. Can't sit on my tail feathers and wait for my muse to come. I must find a way to grab her by the wings. I need to create the perfect atmosphere for inspiration. Now that's what I call a professional artist's approach. Another couple of incense candles, and my muse will come swimming right up. I wonder how things are going for poor Daco. He's probably crying in some corner, ready to just give up. I'll let Carlin be the artist, flitting everywhere, talking about muses and inspiration. <laughs> I've got science on my side. An artist sees light reflected from an object. The image leaves an imprint in his brain. After that, he transmits this image to paper. Normally, it takes talent to do this, but if you understand the science and the principles behind the laws of optics, then you don't need talent. This deceptively simple device was discovered centuries ago. 
All that's needed is a closed box. A tiny hole is made on one wall of the box to let in a thin beam of light. Once the box is lined up with the chosen scene, light reflects off the scene and passes through the tiny hole and an image of the scene appears on the opposite wall of the box. The image appears upside down and backwards because of the way light behaves. Because the box only works if it's dark inside, it was called a dark camera or camera obscura. All right then, let's make a big camera obscura out of my entire cabin. Moose Eureka time! Now all I have to do is outline this projection, and Carlin will be crowing like a rooster in front of everyone in no time at all! <laughs> there! Beautiful! I'm so smart! Mm hmm. What's so hard about this? I'm using an early Picasso abstract style for extra artiness! There! Buh? Oh, yeah, it's upside down, right? There, that's way better, yeah? Well, look closer. Don't forget that it's done in the abstract style of Picasso. Yeah, it's awful. I guess it's possible. I'm not as good at this art stuff as I thought. I need to come up with another method. Oh, that's great. A little lower. Intense, perfect inspiration is coming soon. I can feel it. Ah, oh, yeah. Muse time. <laughs> what? Huh? Did I win? <laughs> oh, my. Well, relaxation has not led to inspiration, has it? Time to take the bull by the horns. Let's see. Hmm. I think this calls for space meditation. Um... I have found a new method. Now my lack of talent for painting won't matter. This way I won't have to draw anything at all. I probably should have thought about this in the first place. Absolutely not, my judgmental friend. It isn't cheating at all. Why, this is pretty much just a better version of a camera obscura. Let me explain. Reflected light from a scene goes through a larger opening and is focused by a lens. Because more light is allowed into the box, a brighter image is produced. If light-sensitive film is placed in line with the reflection, the reflected image is then captured on the film. Color film uses color-sensitive image layers to capture the color of the reflected image. All you have to do is press the button. That's it! I guess I don't quite have the hang of this yet. This is bad, and I don't have time to get good at it. Guess I better think of something else. There are times when inspiration strikes because you're looking at your subject from an unexpected angle. Yeah, yeah, I know there isn't very much time left, but when genuine inspiration strikes, a talented artist can create a perfect masterpiece in only a few moments. Exactly what I'm planning to do. But without all the pretentious, silly, artsy, artsy stuff. No! Scientifically, an image isn't anything but light reflected from an object, which in turn is perceived by our eyes. And finally, I've found the best way to document it. A digital camera. Yay! Metal is sensitive to the photoelectric effect. That light, at a high enough frequency, 
can cause a metal surface to emit electrons. When used in solar batteries, light falls on a semiconductor, like silicon wafers, and knocks electrons loose from the atoms. The electrons are then captured in a circuit to produce electrical power. Instead of film, digital cameras use a charge-coupled device, or CCD. This is a matrix of millions of attached microscopic charge bubbles called pixels. Light, focused by a lens, falls on the pixels of the CCD matrix and causes them to emit electrons. From this, the pixel receives an electrical charge that is stored in the pixel's capacitor. Then, the charges are moved along the matrix rows and dumped at the end of each row to be measured. These measurements are ultimately converted into an image. And that is how we can capture an image using neither talent nor long chemical processes. Just press the button and you're good to go. Oh, oh the battery's dead. Darn it, squared. Well, that's midnight. Guess I lost. That is the weak point of your method, dear old friend. Technological methods depend on other technological methods. <laughs> That is why I prefer classical media. You are right. All right, let's have a look at your masterpiece. Uh, how about we just call it a draw? Whoa, it looks like both of us were beaten. Just one thing to do. The inventors of the CCD matrix are American physicist Willard S. Boyle and George E. Smith. The results of their invention are now used in every digital camera and have truly changed the world. In 2009, Boyle and Smith received the Nobel Prize in Physics for their incredible invention.